Aloha, I'm Kala'i Miller. For more than a century, the iconic Hawaii theater has played a significant role in Honolulu's cultural landscape. It's been an economic anchor in Chinatown while also providing community engagement and social enrichment. And if you think back on all that's happened over the past 100 plus years, the Hawaii Theater has been resilient. It has not only survived, but has thrived. The Hawaii Theater was always coined the pride of the Pacific. My name's Mark. I'm one of the docents here at the Hawaii Theater, one of the original docents here. And I'm gonna to tour you around this fantastic facility. There's nothing else quite like it here in Hawaii or for that matter in, in much of the world because this is a very, very uniquely designed theater. The Hawaii Theater first opened to the public September 6th, 1922. It was the grandest show palace ever conceived in the state of Hawaii. So if you think about around 1915, when the theater was first conceived by the Magoon family, they wanted to have a multi-use facility where you could have both, at the time, were silent films, but then also vaudeville acts. The current site was chosen by the owners of Consolidated Amusement for the theater because it was in the center of the business district. The theater cost about $500,000 at that time to build, which was an astronomical sum. And today that's estimated at a replacement cost of over $100 million. So if we look back to the 1980s and the community volunteers that saw this last remaining grand show palace in Chinatown and rallied together to try and save it, Consolidated Amusement was pulling out and Kamehameha Schools was planning to demolish the theater to put up a parking garage and perhaps commercial spaces. You would have seen that the, the mural right behind me, half of it was missing. There were gaping holes in the lath plaster from the roof leaking. The seats were threadbare. The movie curtains were in shreds. You had rats and, and other vermin running around the theater unabated. So it was quite a task for the volunteers to envision bringing the theater back to its original glory. We today are sitting here in the theater very much on the backs and with the gratitude of the people in the community that stepped up and said, this is important for us to save this theater for our community. Much of what you are gonna see today is very much what this theater looked like, with a few exceptions. And the first exception is this entryway. This doorway along here where these uh, curtain doors are, these used to be the main doors of the theater. So you'd just open these doors and you'd be right here in the lobby. The theater itself was designed over the course of several years. The original architects, Emery and Webb, were sent by the Magoon family to New York. They toured dozens of theaters in Manhattan, spent years evaluating them for acoustics and patron comfort, and designing what would be a very resilient theater that could stand up to the salt air and the difficult weather that we often are exposed to. And the result is this beautiful building that has stood the test of time. It's been around 100 years, and we expect it with the right care of the community and under the stewardship of our nonprofit that we'll be able to ensure it's here for another 100 years. The theater is very much a neoclassical type of a building. It has Greek and Roman influences. It's a little bit of a hodgepodge. Instead of these electric fixtures here, there were seven Chinese lanterns that hung here originally. And of course, that was a nod to the fact that we're right on the edge and part of Chinatown here in downtown Honolulu. If you think about the design of a theater, and you go back to 1922, and people that would come in to experience the Hawaii Theater, this would have been the most beautiful building that had ever been inside of. And it was designed so that as people were waiting for the shows, they could look around the building and identify different scenes, different pieces of interest that they could focus on prior to either the music starting or the organ playing. You were trying to create something that was going to spark imagination in the patrons. So if you look from right to left, 
then you can see the raised relief bronzes on either side featuring seams from the Merchant of Venice. And then if you look up across the top of the proscenium arch, you can see the trompe l'oeil painted tile work. So people look at those and think that they're real tile, but in reality they've been hand painted. That leads you into the mural, which is by Lionel Walden. Uh, Lionel Walden was commissioned to paint the mural, which is called the Procession of Drama. And it is an allegory, which if you look again from left to right, you're going to see the common man being brought forward into enlightenment by the muse of the arts. And then on the top right and left of the archway, you'll also see figures that are painted. And one of the things that I really like about the figures is that they're designed to make you look at it and think, particularly the image on the top right, a little secret for those who know, take a look at the mirror that the figure is holding and looking at the jester that's over her shoulder. The jester behind her appears to be young, but the image in the mirror the artist painted is an old person. So it harkens to the reality that the arts transports you from one place to the other, and everything is not exactly what it's seen in the arts. In order to make this truly the pride of the Pacific, the designers and the architects put little motifs all throughout the theater. So if you're here and you're looking around, you can spot them. So if you look up in the middle of the dome, there's a little flower motif emblem, which is the Alima flower. Then if you also look at the coils around the stage, around the proscenium arch, you'll see that those are made of miley leaf. So look real close, you can see the miley. Uh, and then you can also see the hibiscus, which it was the state flower, is also featured. And then at the very top of the proscenium arch, there's a medallion, which is a symbol of the territory of Hawaii. So the theater was opened in 1922 under the territory of Hawaii. And so the emblem is still in the theater and was part of the restoration to clean it and bring it back to its gilded state. This loge area used to be all wicker seats. These first four rows of seats were considered the best seats in the house. And then they were the most expensive seats in the house, of course. In those days, if you wanted to come to the opening night, it would have cost you $1.50 to sit in one of these chairs. It would have cost you a dollar downstairs and 50 cents upstairs. The dome is original to the theater and it had many different uses, but primarily it's acoustical in nature. The theater was designed prior to the advent of amplified voice and music. So the dome itself helps to take the sound from the stage and reflect it back down into the auditorium. The top is also vented so that if there was ever a fire, smoke would go up out of the vent. And then it also helped to keep the theater cool because at the time the theater was built, you didn't have air conditioning. There were some advancements that, that were done in taking advantage of the trade winds. So if you look at the design of the building where the grills are on the right and the left, that also is on the Malka and the Mackay side of the theater. So they were able to open up the jealousies on the outside of the building to allow the airflow to blow through. The theater also was one of the first buildings in Honolulu that had fans in the basement that would blow air up through the vents in the floor to help cool the theater up. The curtain that you see here is not actually the main curtain, this is the fire curtain to separate audience from theater in case anything goes wrong. This is not the original fire curtain, even though the pattern of it, the diamond head motif, all that on there is the way it looked in 1922, the word Hawaii was not there. Can you guess what word was there instead? Asbestos. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. It actually said asbestos, <laughs> right? Because the curtain was made of asbestos. Of course, in those days, that was a very reassuring and very comforting word because asbestos was known as a major fire retardant. Well, not so reassuring to us today, is it? Right? So, no, that's long since been removed. So the box seats are really important because one of the boxes on the house left side is the governor's box, and on the right hand side is the Magoon box, which is again the Magoon family that built the theater. In the box seats, we have two of the last remaining original lanterns that were from the theater when it opened in 1922. So very much of an Asian theme of the red silk with a pineapple motif. 
that during the restoration, that motif was carried throughout the theater. And you can find it on the draperies, you can see it in the carpets, you can see it emblazoned on the backs of the seats in the loge section as well. Going out and looking at the marquee, one of my favorite things to do is to come and stand under the neon and listen to it because it's really analog technology. Unfortunately, the neon is fragile and party goers and vagrants in Chinatown can be very destructive if they want to be. And so some morning we may come in and find a bulb broken and then uh, those have to be hand blown and then installed by one of uh, the handful of craftspeople still left working on the island to help maintain it. But we felt it was important during the restoration to maintain the neon because it only enhances the historical feel and vibe that you get when you come down to the historical way theater. Can you imagine, you're the singer or the dancer or whoever out here performing, how intimate this feels, right? It feels like they're just right there, right? And when you hear the applause and all that, it's just, it's just magical in this theater. If we don't remember the past and if we don't teach the past, they say we're doomed to repeat our mistakes. In our particular case with the Hawaii Theater, what we want to do is make sure that we're perpetuating Hawaiian arts and culture. When we think about what makes us unique and what makes Hawaii our home, it's, it's truly arts and culture that are the lifeblood of this place. And by teaching the keiki to dance and to sing and make music and perpetuate the experience of those who came before them, we're making sure that Hawaii remains the community that we all love. And I think it's important to have places like the Hawaii Theater where you can step on stage and you can perform on the same stage that your grandmother or your great-grandmother or your auntie performed on. There's a lot of power in that. And when we talk to the artists that come in to perform for the various shows, that's one of the things that they're the most proud of. It's a very powerful thing. And it's one of the things that's really unique about our community and that we need to ensure that we're preserving for the future.